Hey, what's going on everybody? Aaron Hilliard here from Mushroom Wonderland and with me is Alan Rockefeller. You guys have probably seen him on other videos, kind of a world renowned mycologist. A lot of people refer to you as a rock star. Glad you're here in uh, Washington state and we're in beautiful Mushroom Wonderland, my stomping ground. Today we're just gonna go out. It is beautiful right now in Western Washington. It's been raining for a few weeks, tons of diversity out here. So we'll just go out and uh, have Alan describe some of these mushrooms for us. Uh, I got a feeling we're gonna find some good ones. I've always enjoyed how you describe mushrooms. I think a lot of the viewers do too. Yeah, so. and it's really cool going off this time of year because it's really early in the season. So the stuff that comes up after the first rains, after it's been dry for a long time, is completely different than the things you would see a couple months in. So today we're gonna be photographing mushrooms, hopefully find some good edible ones. Maybe some that uh, make you feel a little bit funny. I don't know, there's gonna be a ton of mushrooms out here, so. See what we come across. And uh, join us on this episode of Mushroom Wonderland. Welcome to Mushroom Wonderland. Caprinus canatus. Or maybe Caprinus colossus. Caprinus colossus was described from Washington. Canatus was described from Europe. We probably got them both. It's definitely elongated a little bit, but you got this cool red exudate here. So when the gills break down, they just turn into that black ink, but they make this kind of like red exudate. So it's kind of like red and black. Cool. Yeah, it looks kind of like blood. This thing's probably got like a day left before it just turns to ink and black mush, huh? Yeah. And then the spores just end up in a pile of mush down here. How, how is that beneficial? That's a good question, I have no idea. <laughs> maybe it gets stuck on things' feet or something like that, I don't know. But... Yeah, maybe it just kind of moves with the water. Yeah. Or maybe animals are supposed to eat them, you know, eat the calf. Or... They just kind of generally all go by a shaggy mane though, huh? Yeah, if you want to be safe, just call it a shaggy mane, then you can't be wrong. Yeah, and so I've been seeing people ask, is it is it safe to drink alcohol with these? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's just... You know, the ones you can't drink alcohol with are in Copernopsis, and those are not even in the same family. So they look similar, but uh -huh. they are not at all related. Okay. So but... this is related to Agaricus, and the uh, the ones you can't drink with are related to Sotharella. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's interesting, because if you break one open when it's kind of young, It'll often have like pink gills, right? Yeah, yeah, they always turn pink before they turn black. See that? Just yeah. like an agaricus. Yeah, though I imagine they're pink for a different reason. Yeah? Huh. Yeah, because it's that <laughs> chemical reaction with it. Whereas agaricus is kind of like they start out, you know, they go through a pink phase before they turn brown, usually, depending on the section of agaricus. Cool. Those are good eating, but this is like a dog pee zone, so. <laughs> I might be careful. They absorb a lot of stuff out of the soil, huh? I, I uh, think I've heard that. Yeah, I think I've heard that too. I mean, it really depends a lot on like what's in the soil. What's crazy is when you see them like busting through like asphalt and they're so delicate, but for some reason they can push over big rocks and break through the cement. Pretty, pretty, uh, pretty strange. Yeah, I think most mushrooms can do that. Yeah, that's bizarre. Oh wow. Some right there too. Yeah, that's cool. And you know, when you see something like this, you can see the needles were pushed up really recently, like in the past couple of days. It looks a lot different than just a mound of needles that's been sitting there for weeks or months. Ooh, nice. Yeah, these are really good. Oh, and look at this little one here. We'll leave that uh, one. A little chunk or... Yeah. So what do we find here? So this is Boletus edulis. You can call it Boletus edulis var grand edulis probably, or it could be the European one. They got both of them around here. These are good eating, huh? Yeah. Porcini. Yeah, really good. I got a really, I saw a really cool porcini, uh, um, porcini gravy recipe the other day. Ooh. So I would like to try that out. Can't go wrong. Yeah. So you want to photograph these bad boys? Or well, should I mean, we pull one out? Uh, let me think. Let me take a look and think about it, and think about whether I can get a really good picture of these or not. 
because I got a lot of porcini pictures, but right. you never have too many, but at the same time, like I just kind of want to look at them and see if I think I can make something that's like really, really like worth setting up the camera out of these. That, that, that begs the question, do you ever like stage your mushrooms, like find them and then kind of wait till you can set them up in a nice way? Yeah, for a couple of reasons. I think most mushroom, most good mushroom photos are staged, but it really depends on the kind of mushroom, the kind of photography you're doing. Um, occasionally it's just like perfect and that's usually with tiny mushrooms. So you might succumb and just see like a group of tiny mushrooms. There's nothing you can do to that to stage them any better. You can only make it worse. <laughs> right. um, whereas like, you know, big mushrooms like this, like there's one there, one there, one over there. Like there's nothing I can, there's no place I can put my camera. There's no photo photographic technique I could use to make this like a really awesome photo. Yeah. But if I had more of them, I could kind of lay them out in some cool way or kind of like display all the different stages of development, something like that. So I think, um, I think I'll pass on at least pulling out the camera for these. What a cool net pattern. That's like, kind of like characteristic of the Porcini group. They have that reticulation. Out east, you got a bunch of things that are reticulate but are not in this group, and those are Tylopolis. But if you really oh. zoom in here and look at the actual reticulation, you'll see that the reticulation itself is white, whereas in Tylopolis, the, the edges, like the high parts of the reticulation, are dark, and that's how you tell them apart. We don't really have those around here. So here, you know, any reticulate thing, you know, it'll be the Porcini, Butterbowl League group, or, you know, some of the Satan's bullies will be a little reticulate too. So you gotta All pay right. attention, but. That's a pretty good indicator that you found a porcini, though, huh? That yeah, I mean, no, no one feature will tell you what you found, but that's certainly one of the more important things Ooh. to pay attention to. There's another nugget right back here. Ah, cool. Maybe there's some beautiful little LBMs. Why would you do that? I'm just trying to see what kind of sound it makes. That is solid. That is really solid. So when a mushroom is like solid, it sounds like a drum when you hit tap on it then that means that there's no bugs in there because the mushrooms are like, kind of get soft and mushy and might not make any noise if there's like you know any kind of insects in there so that is just to see if, what kind of condition these in are in and these are prime i really love the crunching sound when you twist it off the mycelium do you want to have the pleasure of doing one okay, all right here let's listen this is the best I see what you mean. It did sound kind of crunchy. That's <laughs> a chunky one. That's yeah, really cool. Beautiful. So it's got and, that sponge-like surface underneath, right? No yeah. gills. And you know, everything in Boletus has what they call stuffed pores. So if we take a really close look at this, the pores are just starting to open up. But if it was like a little bit younger, it would just be smooth on the underside. And other bullets don't do that. It's really the Porcini group mostly that has what they call stuffed pores. Really tight. Look at the base on that. So these are named for the Italian word little piggy, porcini. Yeah. So porcinis actually uh, is the plural. So you're, you're not finding porcinis. We found porcini. And so. scientific name is Boletus edulis. And edulis means edible in Latin. So they just named this after its edibility. Not everything that they named that way is actually edible. Sometimes some of the mushrooms that we now know are poisonous are named uh, Edulis as well. Right. But uh, this one does live up to its name. Yeah, probably my favorite eaten mushroom. So we found, looks like five. There's two little lumpers in here. Yeah. I think it'd be safe to take, you know, at least three. I mean, whatever. Sometimes yeah. I'll just pick every one because these are really prime eating. Yeah, I mean, if you got a use for it, go ahead and take the little one. But for me, I usually leave the little ones because... I mean, the weight of like this, like this probably weighs most, almost a pound, whereas something like that probably weighs like an ounce, but give it four or five days, it will weigh a pound. And right. I would just leave it. But, um, but you know, those little tiny ones, they can be really good for like shavings on salads, you know, eat them raw, or something like that. So yeah, just like... Definitely things you can do with the little ones you couldn't do with the, with the big ones. Mushroom ceviche, just slice it really thin, really good olive oil, just a hit of some kosher salt. Yeah, that sounds really good. Eat it raw. Here we go. Look at all the rhizomorphs coming off of that, so. I can make a little root tips on that. Like you see seeing over here, Justin. Oh, 
All right, so here we have these little white mushrooms. And if you look real close, they have these red dots on it. So this is Hidnellum pickii, the bleeding tooth. Oh man, how cool. Yeah, so Hidnellums, uh, they grow right through these needles, so it's embedded <laughs> in there. Yeah. And they have these spores that look like little crumpled up paper balls, and then the spores grow on the teeth, which you can almost see under there, little, little tiny teeth. So a lot of mushrooms have gills that increase the surface area of the spore producing surface and then these have teeth to increase the surface area of the spore producing surface. Interesting. So what causes that the red drips on it? Those, uh, they call them glutation and they are fungal metabolites. I have no idea what causes them, but if I had to guess, I would think maybe it's trying to get rid of some kind of chemical and you know, it's like trying, it's kind of the exudate. Maybe though, it's trying to attract animals because if this mushroom sits here, the spores are only going to move a couple of inches. You know, they're all going to fall right there. But if it can trick like an animal or a human into picking this mushroom up, that would aid greatly in the spore dispersal. So maybe it's you know, maybe it's just attract, attract attention. Totally. These are super photogenic. People travel from all over the world to just hope that they get a glimpse at one of these mushrooms. So yeah, for sure. I'm kind of lucky to come up come upon them so early in our walk. Um, and these are ectomycorrhizal. They're growing with some trees around yeah, here. Yeah, they're always with conifers. Okay. This one doesn't display too much glutation. Yeah. Maybe we'll pull it and have a look at underneath at yeah, the teeth. Look at that, and then we can take a nice picture. I've actually licked the gutation off of these before. They don't have much flavor, do they? It's peppery. It's really oh, peppery, really? spicy. I'll try it. I'll try this other one. There you go. Get a few in there. Oh, it's spicy. They're spicy, yeah, huh? It just takes a few seconds. Yeah, it's real spicy. <laughs> right? It's like a red brusilla. Yeah, but it goes away really quick. So I guess these are being studied for their anticoagulant properties. They're they're pretty medicinal, supposedly. Really nice. They're really hard. People go, are they deadly? And it's like, no. Are they edible? Mm, not really. They're not toxic, but they're kind of like eating a pine cone or something because they're so yeah. woody. These are actually like the softest I've ever felt because they're so fresh. Yeah, they, like, I just, just fruited a couple of days ago. Yeah, everything's coming up. Well, I'll right see there. if I can get a nice close-up shot of these droplets right here. So Alan's pretty pretty well known for his beautiful photographic work on mushrooms. Yeah, I was going to try to get the best picture I can of these droplets. So what I'm going to do is open the aperture all the way and maybe I'll actually close it down to f8, give me a little more sharpness. And then I'll turn the ISO all the way down, so ISO 32. So I'm just going to focus it and make, I'm just going to turn the focus ring until everything is out of focus because it's focused just a little bit too close so it's focused right in front of the mushroom here. And then, if I go into the menu, there's this cool feature called Focus Shift Shooting. And so what this does is it takes a whole lot of pictures, and each time it takes a picture, it changes the focus a little bit. So each image is like a little slice of the final output image. I'll load this into Helicon and use the image stacking program to combine that into one image. That'll give me really sharp, crisp resolution, and it'll give me like the whole thing at once. You know, even if I stop the aperture down to f32, I wouldn't be able to get the whole mushroom cap in once because my lens is so close. So the photo stocking will give me the focus I want, nice creamy background, kind of best of both worlds. Nice. So 56 right. photos, a tiny little spot is focused on each one, and then the photos are basically laid on top of each other to make one clear image. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's how I take all my pictures these days. If I'm not going to do the photo stocking, then I just use my cell phone. Yeah, look at that patch. I'm down there. Yeah, I see where the spores came from. Yeah. That's one of the bigger patches of hyphaloma I've seen. So hyphaloma, last year was a good year for the capnoides, but I'm pretty sure these are just the fasciculari. Fasciculari, because isn't that uh, an alder tree that it's That on? is. Yeah. yeah, the capnoides and conifer, and then fasciculari is on both conifer and hardwood. Oh yeah, good point. Maybe we should look at these with the UV light. Yeah. Wow. 
So it's going to be really difficult for you not to blow out the colors in this. See how this looks white? Yeah. But maybe I think you can just turn the exposure compensation way down. Yeah. Look at that. That's spectacular. So what are you using here? So this is a 365 nanometer ultraviolet light. And so these things are... You know, really, really good for nature stuff. Most black lights are the more purple ones, the 395. And those are really disappointing. Just like walk around in the woods at night <laughs> with them. So the 365 is definitely what you want to get. Dang, look at this flush. Oh, damn. That's so yeah. cool. So at night, when these will illuminate with that light from like 100 feet away. You'll see them oh, glowing yeah. there. One of the brighter glowing ones, huh? Have you seen many that fluoresce brighter than these ones one that uh, is as bright is the cortinarius subgenus leprosopy and they're like these are like kind of a greenish color whereas the leprosopy is more of a golden color um you know sometimes it's just like bright bright gold almost like the, the color of the caps but that's the color they fluoresce yeah i found one last night i don't know what it was but it was tiny and it was super fluorescent so are these these are pretty poisonous aren't they they claim to be one yeah, of the more toxic are. species yeah. of the up in the northwest i don't think they'll kill you i've read that there was actually a report of somebody dying from eating a whole bunch of them but I already have that. could have been complications with something else but yeah don't eat these ones hyphaloma fasciculari or the sulfur tuft with a name like sulfur tuft doesn't sound very appetizing but they grow in these impressive troops when i was a kid i remember these flushing on a stump behind my mom's house and being really intrigued with them they were probably the first mushroom i ever really identified using field guides when I was like 10 years old. But impressive flush for sure. Dark purple brown spore print, just like psilocybe, yeah? Yeah, you know, this yeah. is the only poisonous mushroom that has a spore print that's dark purple brown. Really? Yeah, exact same color as psilocybe. Sometimes people are like, I don't know if it's poisonous, let's spore print it. It's like, well, I gotta do, do a little more than just spore print it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are these in any way related to psilocybe mushrooms? See that? Wow, look at the spore print on the top of that one. And flip it over, you can definitely see some purple color coming in. You also get some green color in the gills of these things. They are poisonous, but very rarely eaten because they're pretty bitter. So almost nobody like accidentally eats them. If they do, they don't, they don't eat very much. And there's a, a good um, spore print right there. Almost like reddish, dark purple brown. Oh, those are cool. There Look at go. the gills. So this is either a Campanella or a Tetrapyrgos subdendrophora. I'm not getting any smell off it, so I was thinking maybe it would be like a Clytopolis perennialis type thing, but mm. I don't think so anymore because those smell pretty strong. The sweet bread. Yeah, so I'd say... It's definitely Clytosabi. Let's collect it for DNA barcoding. Cool. So how do we do that? So first thing we'll do is take a good picture of it. And then we will um, kind of see we got a few more here. So maybe we can get a picture that shows the top and the underside in the same picture. And then we will dry them and we will send them to Kyle Cannon. Because Kyle Cannon runs nanopore sequencing. And so you can just send mushrooms to Kyle Cannon and he will sequence all of them for free. smelling it that this is a clytopolis how would you describe that smell hmm. the books say sweet bread i think it's closer to cucumber totally but it's not quite cucumber it's um a lot of books also say it should be like wet flour but <laughs> yes. I don't know if people bake anymore i can kind of see that so you've been traveling much lately Oh my God, so much. <laughs> All the time, huh? I haven't been home in four months. Oh my gosh. Does that ever get tiring to you? No, it's really cool to see all the different people in different places. Yeah. It's Chasing cool. mushrooms, what a yeah. life. All different kinds of people. I was just in Washington the last couple of days, and then a week in Alabama, a week in Georgia, then it was Maryland, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Ohio, Mexico. Dang. It's all over. Now you're in Washington. Yeah. How long are you here for? At least 10 days. Nice. Maybe longer. Great mushrooming here right four now. Four events in the next 10 days, and after that, 
I'm free. I kind of want to go home, check in my garden, see how it's doing. Yeah. But at the same time, I really hate to travel from somewhere where it's really wet and my season's really good to somewhere where it's really dry. Yeah. Yeah, totally. I was pretty affected by Gary Linkoff's quote, you know, you should just quit your job right now and just devote your whole entire life to mushrooms. Did it's you? really good advice. Yeah. Is that, did you heed that advice? Is that what makes you do this? I kind of did it before I heard his quote. But, yeah. Um, Still. <laughs> I think it's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> All right, what do we find here, actually? So we got a Phalus here, and I don't think it's really Phalus schwanetzii, because Phalus schwanetzii was described from the Carolinas. So I think this is probably a new species. Yeah. All right, so, yeah, these are, are really well known for dyeing fabric, though, protein fabrics like wool and silk. You just boil it with the fabric, and it'll take on kind of a greenish color. And these are, like, prime specimens, huh? And they're super fluorescent. Oh, yeah. So... Yeah, Sydney makes uh, like a glow in the dark henna with them. Yeah, it's yeah. white henna. Oh, yeah. Yellow droplets in there. Oh, oh. look at that. Oh, so cool. That look, looks like something out of a Ghostbusters movie. Yeah. Look at that. Damn. <laughs> That's bizarre. Huh. Yeah, the top doesn't really do hardly anything at all, but those, those edges do. Oh, yeah. Looks like the cat, like some crazy cavern of crystals and stuff in there. Yeah. And so this has this beautiful suede-like texture on the top there. It has like a lot of really short hairs like velvet. And then the underside, you get this bright white pore surface and brown stem. You'll see mm. these in like usually pre pretty healthy conifer forests. And are these have, mycorrhizal? They grow in with some trees. Because yeah. you never see them in cities or anything. Gotta be, gotta be a mycorrhizal, probably pore type thing, but probably more closely related to albatrellus or something like have that. Have you ever heard of a common name for this? Oh, I don't know. Huh. I usually look up common names on iNaturalist. Um, but the flavor is really unique. So you gotta try this. Okay. So what do you think? Smell test. I don't know. I'm not good at this. I don't think they smell it like smell much. Smell like anything. Yeah. So I'm gonna it's take just... the wormiest part. <laughs> this part's got a lot of worms in it. Ooh. You probably don't need a lot. It's kind of strong. What do you? You taste anything? Nothing, right? Mm. -mm. Still nothing. It's getting weird. <laughs> yeah, it's about that time. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh it's bad <laughs> it's terrible. tastes like a latex or something like a rubber balloon what is that it's uh it's strongly bitter to me yeah but it's fine for the first 10 seconds it's and after like 10 seconds then it kicks in oh isn't that crazy don't let anybody play that joke on you John well, Operas now that they've or... seen this video, they will not have to worry about oh, it. Oh, that's and bad. You see the suede bully? Oh, yeah, suede bully. Oh, that's gosh. the common name. That yeah. thing is super bitter. It yeah. is super bitter. Don't eat that. But it's so weird how it's not bitter at first. It takes a while. Yeah, I thought, I got this in the bag. No, that's terrible. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Uh, you'll be fine in three minutes. It tastes like chemicals. Yeah, don't eat that one. <laughs> Thanks, Alan. <laughs> Awesome. I think that video was good. What do we got here? Oh, it looks like a Xeromphalina. Yeah, so oh, some God. of the Xeromphalinas grow right directly on the ground. So I think we usually call this Xeromphalina cartisanalis, but I'd be a little bit surprised if this is what it really is. Mm. It's also, it's got the decurrent gills, so I think it's actually Campanella, it and it's just beautiful. growing like on this kind of like decayed log here. But, oh man, yeah, these are some of the most beautiful mushrooms. Look at that dark stipe. Yeah. You know you're a mushroom nerd when you're interested in these LBMs, but I just think they're really beautiful. There's cool. nothing more beautiful than just like this black stem and the way the gills like start to run down it. Epipetidra, look at that kind of greenish stipe. Yeah. Beautiful white cap. It looks like there's even like a little bit of remnant on the margin. Kind of cool in UV too. Ah, they're hard to focus on because my camera is like, you're not pointing at that boring thing. Wow, those are cool. So it's kind of fluorescent, but it's like the yeah. same color that it is almost. A little bit more orange. Yeah. Yeah, so these mycenas are cool because they have a separable gelatinous pellicle. So a lot of people check to see 
check for a separable gelatinous pellicle to see if it's like a psilocybin mushroom. Oh yeah. And Ooh. there it is. You can see the the film just peeling right off there. But this is mycena. Nothing in mycena is psychoactive. So dang that nice. So kind of cool. Nah, that was a really good video <laughs> yeah, of it. Got that. that was really good. Look at this nice flush of them. Alright Alan, well thanks for the walk, that was super informative. We actually didn't get too far down the trail. We never do. Awesome, we'll see you on the next one. Much love everybody. Sauteing up some of this porcini that we found today. Also have some porcini and white chanterelle pickles for the rice tonight. What do you think? This is amazing.